Folks, I've put myself through the ringer watching all these god-awful Wow Now films, so I think it's only appropriate that I get to watch the most hilariously shameless knockoff film yet, Finding Jesus. Their film from 2020 that- Wait, hold on. You said we were going to watch a bad movie. I'm not even sure if that thing is classified as a movie. And I've already watched it once before on my own channel, Bradley. But, but yeah, that's why it's perfect to watch it with you. You'll like know what to look out for. No, no, I'm not doing it. I can't do it. I don't think my brain could even withstand another watch. But I, I set up this whole Zoom call with you. Why not? Why not? Well, aside from being one of the worst ripoffs of Finding Nemo, which is Pixar gold, its sole purpose is to shamelessly pander to Christian audiences. The creators don't even try to mask this lazy attempt either. The religious themes are just shoehorned into the plot. They don't even make sense most of the time. And worst of all, the cherry on top of this shit Sunday, it's racist. So that is why I will not be torturing myself by watching another second of Finding Jesus. <sighs> okay, fine, I won't make you watch it with me. I'll go on this journey alone, just like Jesus did. Jesus had the apostles. Maybe I need this movie more than I realized. It's a beautiful underwater day in the ocean. Hey, I'll give Finding Jesus credit. Unlike other Wow Now movies, it doesn't start off with a long voiceover monologue from one of the actors. It starts off with a short one. And Baby Fish Muggles, along with his best friend Joy, is scouring the seabed for yummy algae. And from what sounds like the Peppa Pig narrator, no less. While this intro is short, we do have her popping in to tell the babies watching this what's supposed to be going on. Because remember, in these movies, no actual movement ever happens. Just imagine the lack of talent it takes to make content so static. We have our two leading fish, Muggles. I don't know why it's named that either. We'll call him Trash Compacted Flounder. And Joy, who looks like Dory, but instead of memory loss, is just brain dead. At least she can remember Galatians 5.11, though. I actually have no idea what passage that is, so I should probably check. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision... What now? I, I'm not done, but hold on. We can't start there in a kid's movie. No! No! I, just, I didn't really check this. This isn't in the script. I didn't know this was brought up. No! Circumcision. Do I have to blur that word out? And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, I won't laugh at it like a six-year-old anymore. Why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. Also, why, did, why isn't the then capitalized here? It's like a new sentence, but they don't capitalize it. Now I'm just being a grammatical snob. Where where am I going? I was doing a Finding Jesus video. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> they start off scouring the seabed. Remember those lush, vivid ocean settings from Finding Nemo? Uh, we have an empty abyss of ocean here. I've seen Mario Party mini games with more going on in the background. They go meet up with Professor Shark. I want to know where he got his doctorate. Muggle! Joy! Wherever it was, he probably got it in religious studies since he's telling these two young fish to go spread the word of Jesus to the rest of the ocean. Like a game show host, no less, too. Now you can, Joy! So come on down, Joy, and see what's behind door number one! He's also where we see that patented Wow Now voice acting technique of taking way too long to say anything. Jesus is very, very pleased with you. <laughs> Both of you. Hurry up. I guess it's still better than Muggles' laugh, though. <laughs> Professor Shark instructs the fish to go talk to someone, but I can't remember who. Why, it's Scary Henry. It's on the tip of my tongue. Scary Henry? Oh, no, wait, what was it? Scary Henry? Once more. Yes, Scary Henry. Got it, right. Fifth time's the charm. And wow now, is it too much to ask for a second take from the actors when they straight mess the lineup? He might could use a little pep talk. He might could use a little pep talk? Even as I was typing that into my script, Google Docs is like, dude, come on, fix this, what are you doing? And are you all ready to see Scary Henry? If you're afraid of scary things, you may want to close your eyes, but don't click off this video, please. Please don't 
Click off this video, I'm serious. Just close your eyes. Oh, just terrifying. A crab that's permanently smiling. It's the aquatic Joker. Or at least an overly obsessed fan of the Joker. It's even worse. They tell the crab that if he ever wants to hang out with them, he can. He's like, meh, okay. And Muggles is like, that's it. Just, eh. Okay. What did you want Henry to do? Some sort of dance just because you invited him to hang out with you? You want me to do some surface breaks or something? Am I actually on Scary Henry's side? Uh, okay. But in case you forgot Finding Jesus is a religious film, they start laying on the pious tactic known as guilt tripping. We think of you as family, Henry. And so does Jesus. Oh, don't forget about him. Run, Scary Henry. They're trying to convert you. Then we meet Miss Wudley, who talks about as fast as Stevie from Malcolm in the Middle. Do you find my personality... Abrasive? To what do I owe this wonderful visit? They just all talk smack about Scary Henry before the starfish lady recites a Bible verse. If you watch closely though, you can see a scene from Finding Nemo going on in the background. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. They then return to Scary Henry and recite the Bible verse back to him. Is this like an RPG fetch quest or something? Getting hard Ocarina of Time vibes here. The darndest thing is, it actually works. I see a smile. What do you mean? He hasn't stopped smiling. I'm diagnosing it as tetanus at this point. The fish return back to Professor Shark, I'm assuming to gain their RPG experience points and shove off again. Then here's a hot joke for you. There's no one on our coral reef nearly half as cool as you. Well, of course I'm cool. I'm an ocean fish. My body temperature hovers around 37 degrees Celsius. <laughs> Could you imagine if I just laughed hysterically like that at my most basic of jokes? Finding Jesus, more like finding Jesus is sus. <laughs> hmm, are you sure you're not a clownfish? Yes, or else Disney definitely would have sued. Next, we go back to Professor Shark. Uh, did one of them forget their keys or something? What's going on? And when we come back to him, the narrator introduces Professor Shark again, like we didn't just scar our eyes with the sight of him moments before. He takes his time to tell the baby fish that there's a swordfish stuck in seaweed who can't breathe. Marlow wasn't paying attention and got himself stuck in seaweed. And as we all know, if he can't swim and keep water rushing through his gills, he can't breathe. And if he can't breathe, well, uh, I don't I... Maybe have a little more urgency for the life and death situation? Oh no. Really worried, huh? Hey, Ted just got hit by a car. Oh no. I'm so worried. We know we care about our friends. Exactly. Why is it that friendship is so important, Professor? Stop talking about friendship! Someone is dying! A fish is dying! Quit floating around and just go already! Finally, on their way to save the swordfish, they meet a flattened whalemer doing his audition for the next Wow Now St. Patrick's Day movie. He freed himself from that seaweed. You should have seen him. It was amazing. He lets them know the swordfish already freed himself from the seaweed with his sword because he's a swordfish. How was this ever a problem? They still meet up with a swordfish though to just have a chat because did you think this movie was really going to have a plot? The swordfish thanks them for coming to save him. Wow, I've never had friends who risked their lives for me before. What about the squashed fish guy who told them that you were safe, you know? He just gets completely ignored. Hello darkness, my <laughs> Finding Jesus then joins Kylie Jenner in curing the real racial issues of the world. But we don't need to be the same to be great friends. Right. In fact, what makes us so different is part of what makes us so compatible. The swordfish rants to the two youngins about some biblical characters they remind him of. I don't know, I didn't really pay attention during this part. I couldn't pay attention when my dad would take me to real church. I'm not gonna start paying attention now just because it's dressed up as a Hawaiian animated nitroglycerin nightmare. <laughs> Later, they go back to Professor Shark and tell him what they learned today. Then they go back out to sea, just to transition to the same spot. Am I going insane? What is this? Okay, I see what's going on here now. Finding Jesus was originally pitched as a TV show probably in like 12 minute segments to be some sort of Christian TV show. Trying to go for that Oaxis Butch Hartman bag I see. So this next bit is weird. Professor Shark sends the main fish to this whale. The whale tells them of a spot with a lot of algae, which is food for the fish. 
but not the whale. That checks out fine. The main fish goes to tell the other fish about where the food is because Jesus. Then they just go back to the whale and say they're going to give her a gift to repay her. We'd like to give you a gift as well, Patty. Me? No one's ever given me a gift before. Here's a niche joke for the audience. This guy saying that nobody's ever given him a gift anymore gave me flashbacks to playing Star Fox Adventures. Nobody brings me gifts anymore. That guy. And then here's the weird thing. The gift to the whale is showing her a location with lots of whale food, which is... Plump crustaceans. Crustaceans! So, so you mean like Scary Henry? Are they putting a hit out on Scary Henry? Stop! He accepted Jesus! The smile wasn't fake, I promise! Seriously, what is this community? We have sharks that don't eat fish and teach them the Lord's word, but we have whales that just sound so sweet, but devour entire groups of shelled citizens. Shittisons, shittisons, shelled shittisons. Can I keep it? Is that a bad word? If I, if I just got tongue tied? Your very own crustacean farm. You guys, what did I ever do to deserve such good friends? So we ratted out where those crustaceans were if you just go gluttonously genocide them. Well, you know, amen and have fun everyone. Family felt. We go back to Professor Shark, laugh, and the narrator plays us off, Johnny. The next part starts with Muggles and Joy worried because they didn't do their Bible study homework. <laughs> At least they aren't nerds, though! However, Professor Shark knows all. Our other students informed me that they observed you playing in the open water. It's freaking North Korea up in this ocean! Fish tattling on other fish, man! Professor Shark makes them go talk to some other adults to help rebuild their moral fiber. First, a dolphin that just spouts information at them. I remember always learning the best when an adult condescendingly gave speech to me. But you were being lazy! I know, but... Wouldn't it have been better to fess up and tell the truth? Just say you made a mistake? Yes. Oh my! I always thought you two were good, little fish. <laughs> Oh, I just had another racial stereotype nightmare. Here you go, fishy! This sunken ship is a secret place. Only a few of us ocean old-timers know about. Oh god, it was real. Seriously though, who approved of this? Mickey Rooney? How was this okay in the voice actor's mind with the editors? The whoever else works at Wow Now? I know this sin was featured in Saber Sparks video a good amount, but I still wasn't prepared for him. There is a literal piece of sushi sliced up skinned fish as a character in this fish movie! Uh, maybe it was just a cosplaying fish who's really into creepypasta. Yeah, that's what I'll tell my kids. All right, moving on. Jesus Talk Professor Shark narrator laugh next. Praise God! Woo! In the next segment, a natural disaster has hit the ocean apparently, and the fish have spent all day finding a new home. No nasty old currents can keep our school down, Joy. The fish will always rise. Is it just me or did that sound like a fish supremacist line or something? I just didn't like whatever that means. Just watch your back, Professor Shark. They got Scary Henry and they'll get you too. Are you surprised though? We check in with Professor Shark and he congratulates the fish on rebuilding their entire society in one day. Take that, Rome. But love sometimes isn't enough for creatures to bounce back from misfortune and failure. Sometimes faith and perseverance are required to regain what we had before a hardship. I see. Psh, love, psh, family, no, you don't need any of that. You just need the big man and the good book. Sharkface sends them to help a manta ray whose name is Boo Cakes because that's when the mushrooms started kicking in for the writer. On the way, we have to talk to this fish. Nothing happens, he just sort of gives them directions, but it's in the same exact voice as Commander Squeak from Alien Busters. And Day of the Dead if you want to get technical about this. I'm sure Boo Cakes would be happy to see some friends. Commander, how many times have I told you the ship's toilet is for carbon or tissue-based objects only? Are these voice actors robots with only three voice settings and that's why they can't be bothered to alter them even a little bit? They find the manta ray who has the same voice as the dog from Alien Busters. That's your domain. Uh, let's say we move it and see. 
Yeah? Uh, how so? I love hearing this impression of Dracula after eating saltines with no water. Also, it's embarrassing how noticeable it is that they just flipped the Manta Ray character to face him in a different direction because his eye that is creepily more open than the other also just changes sides. Some action will make you feel better. And it's also the best way to honor Jesus' investment in us. Uh, uh, okay. Whatever. So this Manta Ray has had a natural disaster wipe out his home and he's now just sitting on the rubble like, oh, I guess my home is gone. Sigh, better just mope. Unless you got a magic conch shell, I don't think this is a good plan, Cracker Drack. Because God, the baby fish helps Boo Radley Cakes find a new home. Loki off topic, but I hated reading To Kill a Mockingbird because once the chapter came up with Boo Radley, that is all I got called by my fellow students. Also, I'm noticing a lot of this movie is just going places since it seems like the 3D fish models have an entering the frame animation and n nothing else. So they try to use those animations as often as possible to keep the two-year-old's attention. The times the fish are swimming, which I put in air quotes, is just the same idle animation too. You're not slick well now, we can all tell. The manta ray gets a new home and is happy now, so you know what that means. Overcoming great difficulties is but one of the gifts Jesus has bestowed upon us. Yeah! It's through faith in him that we can find the strength we need to bounce back after failure or misfortune. Hold on, dealing with failure? Dude's house got taken out by a natural disaster. And I don't think he needed faith to tell him, hey, maybe work on being without a home. It's kind of weird they're giving that win to Jesus. He destroyed your home, but at least you can find a new one. Oh, thank you, loving father. That's the end of that one, and now it's on to the beginning of the end, since we're on to our final fish tale of the evening. And man, does Professor Shark sound upset today? What's wrong? Oh no! What's wrong, Professor? Oh, uh, it's Fizzy. She promised Rosie she'd play with her today. Oh, good heavens, a play date! We just got over the natural disaster plot, and now we're just casually gonna stroll into one kid not showing up to the playground. I know I'm already a lunatic for criticizing Finding Jesus on its progression of stakes, but these are some seriously flawed stakes. So there's this little pink fish that thinks her friend doesn't want to see her. I know that, since that's what she says verbatim. No, she obviously doesn't want to see me. I'm just a little pink fish after all. Man, no one wants to hang out with me. I'm just a big old white guy after all. I mean, actually come to think of it, it does kind of sound like a sect of Reddit. But the other fish did want to see her friend. She just mixed up her days. She's just a clumsy little fish, you know? Oh, I mixed up my days. I'm just a clumsy little fish, you know? Can we stop with these self-introductory lines, please? Oh, oh. Oh, we can't? Okay, then. I'm just a clumsy little fish. Hey, don't say that, Fizzy. You already said that one. You still want to be my friend? After I left you high and dry today? Sure I do. <laughs> I'm a pink fish. We are loyal to the end. So loyal, in fact, that she sent two other fish to go see why her friend missed their play date. And as a breakdown the first time you do the slightest thing wrong. Toxic, toxic... Seriously though, what was like the God Bible like lesson we were supposed to take from this one, you know? Check your Bible quote calendar every day, which I won't be doing, Mom. I'm sorry, I'm selling that on Mercari. They didn't maliciously not keep their promise though. It was just a schedule mix up. God's really gonna be mad because I missed a play date. What if I was reading the Bible or had a family emergency? God's still gonna be taking points off because I didn't go play tetherball. A promise to a friend is no different than a promise to Jesus. And you wouldn't skip out on a play date with Jesus, would you? No. Hey, you wouldn't want to miss out on a play date with Jesus, would you? I could like almost hear the youth pastor's chair turning around as he said that line. And you know, I might skip out on a play date with Jesus. It's not like I don't think he was a bad guy. I just don't think we would have really had a lot in common. Seems a little dry for me. But then I guess if I skipped, his dad would know. So I guess I'd have to go and like have a good time. Wouldn't his dad just know I was faking it to have a good time? So it's a lose-lose for me. St. Peter is going to be using this video against me for sure. Muckles and Joy set out to spread his word far and wide throughout the sea. Praise Jesus, Joy! Always and forever, Muggles. Woohoo! I do like that finding Jesus ends in a woohoo instead of an amen. It's what you yell when you've had too much communion wine. Chug that blood of Christ! Woohoo!
them. And that, my congregation, was Finding Jesus. Another bafflingly bad animated turd from Wow Now Entertainment. And after sitting through this, the existence of God feels more unlikely than ever. So with that said, I- Bradley. Like... Bradley. Bradley. What the, God? Oh my God. Oh, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I'm also really sorry for the past like whole half hour. I, I didn't mean anything I said, really. I didn't, except about the commander squeak fish voice thing. That thing is really annoying, but I'm really sorry about everything I've said. No, Bradley, it's me, Saber. Y you never ended our call. Oh. oh. Why didn't you just hang up? Uh, uh, clicking a whole button? I, no, I can't do it. Too lazy. So does that mean you're still down to watch a movie with me? <sighs> sure, why not? Now that you're actually done making that video, we can actually watch something that's- Finding Jesus too. it is then! Oh, oh hell no. Saber? Saber Spike? Steven?